This video was brought to you by Log Rocket, the front end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at logrocket.com slash YT. Hey everyone, and welcome to today's video where we'll be looking at five different ways of making HTTP GET requests in Node.js. You might wonder to yourself, what do I need to know five different ways of accomplishing the same thing? Well, each method has its own advantages and disadvantages and individual aspects that might appeal to you as a developer. Of course, Node comes with its own built-in way of achieving this, so that's what we'll look at first. And then we'll look at how this is accomplished with packages like Axios, Got, SuperAgent, and Node Fetch. That's a lot to get through, so let's go ahead and get into it. Before we get started with the descriptions and the code though, let's run through some prerequisites that you'll need in order to get the most out of this guide. You should already have Node.js installed on your computer, and you should already be familiar with commands like npm init, and you should also be aware of the npm install command, installing packages for your Node projects. As well as that, you should also be familiar with callbacks, promises, and the async await pattern. These are really basic, but if you know these things, you'll get the most out of this guide. We'll make a get request to a JSON placeholder mock API. This mock API will send us back the data of 10 users. Of course, it's just fake data. With this data, we'll print out each user's username and their user ID. At any time, you can view all the code involved in these requests on this GitHub repository. The first example is callback based, the next two are promise based, and the last two use the async await pattern. So Node comes with a built-in way of making these HTTP GET requests. So that's the first way that we'll look at of how it can be done in Node. And it looks a little bit like this. The first thing we need to do, we need to include a dependency on the HTTPS module within Node itself. We don't need to install this or use a package JSON to reference this because it's already part of Node, which is pretty convenient. The next thing we do is we call our JSON placeholder API and we ask for a list of users. And then we have our response here in this res variable. Then we initialize our empty data array, which is the array we'll use to store our individual users. Then we get the header date from the response headers. Then we just log the status code and the header date to our console. Next up, we have this res.on method. And what's happening here Every time we receive a new user from this request, we simply add it into our empty array by pushing it into the array. Finally, we have what to do at the end of the request, and we simply log that the response has ended. Then on the response end, we concatenate the array data, change it into a string, and pass the JSON to get the list of 10 users as an array of objects. Then we just loop through these 10 users and log the ID and name of the user object one at a time. Something else worth noting here is we've also registered our error handler here. So if there's an error on the request, the error message is logged to the console. And again, because the HTTPS package is just part of Node, we don't have to include any package or package JSON to bring this in. We can just already use it because it's there and it's good to go. So now we'll go ahead and just hit F5 in VS Code and we'll see the result. And as we can see there, we have our result here from the code. We have our request as we would expect to be 200 okay, the date and time we'll input the request in, and then the list of users from our test API. Now we'll see how we can use Axios to do the same thing. Axios is a very popular promised-based request library. It's a HTTP client that's available for both the browser and Node.js. It also includes handy features like intercepting requests and response data, and also has the ability to automatically transform request and response data to JSON. Because Axios is an NPM package, the first thing we'll have to do is use NPM install to add it to our project. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that now. NPM install dash dash save Axios. That'll add it to our package JSON for our project as well. And now because we've done that, we can now go ahead and set up our code sample. As you can see here, there's less code here than in the earlier example. It's promise-based as opposed to callback-orientated. 
So this code can easily be turned into an async await format if you want to. But let's have a look at what this code is actually doing. First, we require the Axios library, and then we call the JSON placeholder API with the Axios get method, which is promise based. We use a then method to get the result. And when the promise is resolved, we then get the response as the res variable here. We then log the status code and date from the response header. Again, as we can see here, we also get the status and the header date from the header from the request. We get the JSON data easily with res data thanks to Axios's auto transformations. And then again, we just loop through these users, logging the ID and the name. In case of any error, we log the error message to the console. So again, it's pretty simple and more concise than the built-in node way of doing it. Next up, let's see how we can use got to do the same thing. Got is another popular HTTP request library for Node.js. It claims to be a human-friendly and powerful HTTP request library for Node.js. It also features a promise-based API and HTTP2 support. Currently, got is actually the most popular HTTP client for Node.js with over 19 million downloads per week. Now, again, because got isn't part of Node, we'll have to go ahead and use the npm install command to include it in our project. So we'll just do that now. npm install, save, got, and in a few moments, that should be done. A quick example on how we can use got looks like this. This code here is pretty similar to how we'd use Axios, but it has two main differences. We need to pass this response type JSON as the second parameter to indicate that the response was in JSON format. And the status code header is called status code, not just status. Apart from that, the other things in this example remain pretty much the same and have a lot in common with Axios. So next up, let's have a look at how we can do this using SuperAgent. SuperAgent is one of the oldest Node.js request packages released in April 2011. It's a pretty robust HTTP library for Node.js and SuperAgent brands itself as a small, progressive client-side HTTP request library and Node.js module with the same API supporting many high-level HTTP client features. It offers both callback and promise-based APIs. With a promise-based API, using async await can be an easier way of using this package. SuperAgent also features a wide array of plugins, ranging from no cache to measuring HTTP timings. The first thing we'll have to do is install the super agent package. So let's have a look at how we can call this API using super agent. To provide some variety here, we'll use an async await for this illustration with an immediately invoked function expression, also abbreviated to IIFE, compared to a promise-based example. So let's have a look at how this code sample actually works. So of course, first of all, we required our super agent package, and then we started our immediately invoked function expression with async because we want to use async, a wait keyword later on. Next up, in the, in the try block here, we use super agent.get with the await keyword, which resolves the promise and gives us the result of the HTTP call. Then, through using this res variable, we have access to the date of the request and also the status code which we log to the console. Then we just set the result of the request to our users variable here before we loop through the results and then print them out to the console. Finally, because our code is in a try block, if there's any issues, they'll be handled by the catch here with every error being logged out to the console. Because SuperAgent has been around for so long, it's very mature and battle tested, which makes it pretty reliable. We can also test SuperAgent calls with SuperTest, which is a very handy library in its own right. Finally, let's have a look at NodeFetch. NodeFetch is another surprisingly popular HTTP request for Node.js. In the first week of December 2020, it was downloaded more than 20 million times. In their own words, NodeFetch is a lightweight module that brings the Fetch API to Node.js. Its feature includes consistency with the browser-based window fetch, a native promise and async functions. So the first thing we'll need to do is install node fetch into our project. So now let's have a look at this example to see how we can use node fetch to call our mock users API. This example will use the async await pattern to help keep things simple. 
So let's have a look at some of the differences between node fetch and super agent. That the fetch function didn't need an explicit get method. The HTTP verb, if we need one, can be sent as a method key in the second parameter. Another difference is that the header is an object with a get method to get the header values. We called res headers get to get the date to get the value of the date in the response header. The final difference was the need to unwrap a promise to get the body as JSON with await res JSON. It seems like a little bit of extra work, but that's how the browser fetch API response works. So as we've seen, there's really quite a few ways to achieve HTTP GET requests in Node, whether you want to use the built-in way of doing it or use one of the many available packages to achieve the same thing. Ultimately, whatever method you decide to use for your HTTP GET requests will probably work really well and be reliable. When you do make a decision on what one you'd like to use, feel free to let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more tips on how to do things like this in the future. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can see the full tutorial in our blog post linked in the description below. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also find more tutorials and videos we've already posted on our YouTube page.